What's up everybody? Gonna be looking at a new air rifle that I got recently as a gift. This is the Gamo Silent Cat and it's part of the Whisper series. So you'll see down here we've got the built-in sound suppressor which they claim reduces noise up to or barrel report up to uh, 52 percent. I'll just kind of do a walk through and show you the rifle and what I've done to it here. Um, kind of before we get started, I want to talk about uh, just gamo guns in general. I've never been a huge fan, although I have actually had several over the years. Um, I guess they're kind of, uh, I won't say low quality but they're they're not a high grade air rifle in my opinion at least the ones that I've had experiences with and I think Gamo does a lot of experimentation so they've had some that are better than others but I, I find that a lot of them are kinda gimmicky like their air shotgun and even these whisper series guns uh, it's kinda of been shown that the suppressor doesn't really do much, uh, particularly just based off the design of the rifle. Uh, a lot of the, the noise comes from the spring itself because you have this uh, a loud metal clang. And the suppressor is really meant to reduce like sonic noises. Um, ironically, when you shoot PBA pellets, which are the high velocity pellets, um, it's extremely loud, so it's almost like the suppressor doesn't work at all on those. Um, but the one thing I do like about the suppressor is you have to grab this end to cock it. So it gives you more of a grip than just the thinner barrel. So that, that actually works as a handle to grip it. So I, I don't mind it even if it's relatively ineffective. Um, it's got this new stock design, which I like has a, a thumb hole style stock so that fits in the hand pretty good and really you wouldn't even have to use it if you don't want to you can just grab around the whole thing if you have bigger hands uh, the trigger it seems to use some sort of new trigger it says SAT which I'm not sure what that means offhand um, something adjustable trigger I don't know um, this is the safety uh, another thing I like about the safety is it doesn't engage automatically every time. So if if you just cock it, it's not going to... That's safe. It doesn't automatically engage, and I actually like that because I don't like having to deal with safeties if I don't want to. So you can leave that permanently off safe if you want, uh, which is uh, a good thing in my book has the rubber butt stock. Um, I've painted everything on here but the rubber because rubber doesn't take to spray paint very well. And I just did a real basic design. Uh, green, beige, and then I did a made my own stencil, just made some twig shapes. And then created some branches just to give it kind of a basic woodland desert camo job there. prop this up here. Now this rifle has open sights. It also comes with a 4x32 scope. It's a pretty cheap scope. Um, had a little label over here and the first shot the label just fell off. But the scope actually has a pretty good sight picture and seems to be holding up pretty well so I can't complain there. Uh, but the open sights uh, when you get it, it comes like this. Now this is, I got this off of Amazon, so I'm not sure if when you get it at the stores, if the sights come on the gun. Every single review I've seen of this gun, and there's a lot of them, they all have the sights on, even though it's using a scope, which I don't fully understand. All you have to do for this one is just slide it out to the side, 
This one, it unscrews, just folds over and then unscrews, and you can take that one off. Um, the thing is, it's got kind of a low relief scope mount, so if you leave these on there, it's going to take up half of the, the bottom of your sight picture on your scope. So anybody you see with this gun who has the open sight still on and the scope that it comes with probably doesn't really know what they're doing because your the view in your scope is impeded a lot by that. I've seen a lot of kids with these and these are sold at Walmart and big box stores so you know they probably don't know any better but if you're gonna use a scope unless you plan on frequently <clears throat> taking it off and switching to open sights just uh, <clears throat> excuse me just go ahead and remove them and then you're not going to have to deal with that. The only thing here is this part there sticking up is a little sharp and it's just plastic but I went ahead and just kind of ground that flat. Um, it may pose a problem if I try to put the sights back on which I don't plan on doing uh, but I could probably sand it back and, and make it work again so I'm not too concerned with that. Um, they say that it's got a fluted barrel. You'll see the fluting here. But this is some sort of composite. I don't think it's metal. It, it feels plasticky, so I, I think this is just a plastic overmold on top of the existing barrel. So they say it's fluted to reduce weight, or I heard that somewhere. Well, it's plastic, so that's that's pointless. Uh, it's more of a cosmetic thing and to allow the the uh, open sight mount to fit on there. Um, as far as power, it is, uh, you can't see it, but right up here it says Gamma Silent Cat 1250 FPS. Well, I chronied this with Crossman Premier hollow points at 951 feet per second. That's a relatively light pellet. Um, I've had another Gamo uh, rifle like this. I think it was the Gamo Shadow. And as far as I know, they're supposed to be using the same power plants, which is just the, the uh, normal spring piston. But that one only shot about 880 feet per second with lead pellets. So this one's 950. So either this one just happens to be better or they're using a different type of spring or I don't know. But that, that's pretty good. Um, the 1250 is for the PBA ammunition, which is always... Um, you know a lot faster because it's lighter but I don't think it gets anywhere near 1250 it's probably upper 11s maybe 1100 feet per second um, I wouldn't really bother with that ammo it's not very accurate or consistent usually and it's much louder in this gun so I would stick with lead 950 feet per second is still really good uh, the gun has proven to be accurate Just turn it over here so you can see both sides of it. See the camo job I've done here. The gun has proven to be pretty accurate. Um, I'm getting pretty good groups out of it. Definitely would be a good hunting gun. Excuse the mess here I have on the rest of the table. But it took a lot of work to do this paint job. Oh, by the way, I did um, use this primer and then Krylon paints and as well as some military vehicle and recreation camo paint I got from the Army Surplus store. Uh, let's see, what else to talk about on this? 
Um, so it's, it's powerful, it's accurate, it's lightweight, it is a bit long, especially with that uh, suppressor on the end. That's one drawback. Now you can cock it, it's a brake barrel, so you cock it and the barrel kind of comes back at about an angle like this. So you could probably put that in a bag, wedge it in a bag in the cocked position and it'd be easier to transport or more concealable at least. So that's not a bad idea. I like the uh, trigger guard here. It's a little bit unconventional. It's more angled than a, a rounder traditional trigger guard. So that's kind of cool. Along with the foregrip, it's got this hump here. Just kind of an interesting design in it. It does have that unique thumb hole here. Which is cool. I like to, um, I don't like conventional straps for my guns or slings so what I'll do is I'll actually just weave a piece of rope or cordage through this part and then just hang it around my shoulder and just let it dangle on on the side of my body as opposed to putting it on my back it's just easier to draw quicker that way so it's nice that I actually have a hole built into the stock so that I can just run a loop through there So that's kinda cool um, again, I know there's a lot of reviews out there about this gun, but I just wanted to do my own uh, because I know nobody has a camouflage theirs like this one. It actually came out pretty well. I was going to clear coat it, but it the, the camo does kind of chip and scratch, scrape off a lot. Which is fine, you're never going to have it perfect, but if I want to add to it later, change the design, I'll just kind of leave it as is and, and touch it up as I see fit. So, But uh, that's pretty much it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.